So what do we want to see in a toothpaste? All you need is something that'll clean. So for me, I use bentonite clay. It has minerals in it, so it's going to get minerals into the tooth. It's, you know, it's going to clean the tooth off and you want to add minerals back. Honestly, those are the only two things you want. You might need to add something to actually make it taste good because if you want your kid to use it, especially it can't really taste like dirt. There was one kind I remember my kids were using and they're like, mom, it just tastes like lemon flavored dirt and it's super disgusting. <laughs> so, you know, they're just not going to use it. <laughs> so uh, what I have in my tooth powder is the mineral that you want to add back is called hydroxyapatite. You're going to hear it all over the place now. Hydroxyapatite's yeah. the buzzword. Everybody's talking about it. That's the mineral the teeth are made of. Doesn't it make sense? I've been saying this for years. Shouldn't we replace what's missing rather than replace what was never there to begin with, which is fluoride? Let's yeah. replace the hydroxyapatite. So it's a, basically, it's a calcium, a chelated calcium mineral that, that builds the tooth. In this episode, I get to interview Dr. Michelle Jorgensen, and I am so excited to share this information with you. Dr. Michelle was a dentist practicing for 10 years when she started to have some really interesting symptoms and she decided to delve deeper and ask why. She found out that she had mercury poisoning and it set her on a trajectory of learning so, so much about holistic dentistry, our teeth health in regards to our whole body health, autoimmune diseases, and so much more. In this episode, we talk about all those things. And then my favorite part of this episode is all the tools that you can incorporate right away in your family. I went through a lightning round with her and I asked her, what are some of the best things and worst things for our teeth? I asked her, what are some of the best foods, worst foods, best habits, worst habits? What should we have in our toothpaste? What should we not have in our toothpaste? This episode has so much information for you. I am so eager for you to hear it. Let's go ahead and jump in. Welcome, Dr. Michelle. I am so excited to have this time with you. It's been a pleasure to hear your story. Uh, as a chiropractor and someone who's really into the natural health of the body, I have been just blown away by the things that I've learned about um, integrative dentistry uh, the further I've got along in my chiropractic career. I'm someone who grew up with a lot of cavities, a lot of fillings, using a lot of the traditional toothpaste. My parents just had no idea, and we know so much more now. So welcome to this episode. Thank you so much for sharing your information. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk. Okay, so I would love to start with just your incredible story. I know you're an integrative dentist and a naturopath, which which is such a fascinating combination. So you've got, <laughs> you've got a couple different schools of training. Um, yeah. And so I would just love to start with kind of how you got brought into this world of integrative dentistry. Well, I definitely didn't start here. That's for sure. Uh, my father was a dentist. And so I grew up knowing dentistry, being around dentistry. And it was just what we did. And so I went to dental school. And after graduation in a few years, he and I started a practice together. It was going great. We were taking great care of people. Everything was going along as it should until I started to get sick myself. And, you know, you've been in this world long enough. A lot of the things people just write off as, oh, I'm getting older, or this is what happens to everybody. So I started having gut issues. Well, who doesn't have gut issues almost, <laughs> almost anymore, you know? Yeah. So I thought, well, this is just food. So we changed, changed a lot of our food. We changed the way we were eating, the way we were handling food, all those kinds of things, and it didn't go away. But the bigger issues were memory problems. I had some significant memory issues, and I've never had those. I've always had a very good memory. And the biggest one that was really career changing was numbness in my hands. I got to the point that I couldn't even change um, like the burr in the hand piece when I was using it as a, as a dentist. So I thought, I can't, I can't continue my career. And uh, this was, I was in my early to mid-30s. This was the income for our home. My husband actually worked for the practice as well at the time. And losing this was losing everything for us from a career and financial standpoint. So I was looking at what my next steps could be. You know, I was going to consult or coach or do something like that. And finally, a colleague in talking with him about some of those things said, you know, have you ever looked into mercury poisoning? Because no one had given me an answer. I mean, I'd been to every doctor, taken every test, done everything that anyone had told me to do, and nothing was improving. So I said, well, I, I don't have any mercury fillings. You know, I don't know how it could be mercury toxicity. And he just kind of chuckled and he said, ah, it's not the fillings you have. It's the fillings you've been drilling out for the last, you know, 10, 12 years, breathing it all in, no protection. 
Well, they don't teach you that in dental school. They don't tell you that that can be a problem. They don't tell you that the dentist can get sick or the dental assistant or the dental receptionist or whomever, you know, can get sick. And they certainly don't tell us that the patient could get sick from this. So I had just been thrilling out a lot of old, old, ugly black fillings because people thought they were ugly. You know, I was a cosmetic dentist and didn't know it could make me sick. So I had to learn how was I going to continue doing dentistry and not continue to put mercury in my body, in my system. So I had to get it out and to get it out, you can't keep putting it in. So I found an organization that had an entire protocol for how to remove mercury filling safely without getting it in. I didn't even know they existed, had no idea that they were even there, had to learn how to do it, and I did it for me. And then my patients started saying things like, oh, my doctor's looking for someone that can do it like this. You know, could I tell them about you? So then I had doctors start to reach out because they know a lot more than I do about this at that point. They were the ones teaching me. And then they would say, oh, have you looked into ozone? Have you looked in, you know, they would start introducing me to these other concepts that I had never heard about. And I would have to go find information and classes and wherever to try to learn them. I joked that I learned, you know, ozone through a veterinary conference, you know, just things like that because they're, it just didn't exist. And eventually I found that I couldn't unsee the things I was seeing now. I couldn't go back to doing things the way I was doing it before. Even if my health wasn't compromised, there was no way I could do that anymore. And I have really taken a deep dive into what does this look like and how is, does dentistry affect health? So it was my challenges that initiated it, but now I'm doing it for my patients. And as part of that process, I really wanted to understand the way the body works just from a natural health standpoint. So that's what led me to continue my education uh, to get uh, board certified in naturopathy. And now I'm able to combine all of that nutrition information and all sorts of other things with the dentistry. So I didn't get here intentionally. This was not a straight road. <laughs> it's so often how it happens. And I'm so excited yeah. to pick your brain with all that background. You have so many incredible nuggets that I know we're going to share. So many great things that parents can swap out at home for their kids that are going to just help so much with not only dental health, but whole body health. But I just want to go back, you know, it's a lot of times I think we've both heard of this concept pain to purpose, right? So we go through these challenges that we don't plan on that completely hijack our lives. And sometimes like in your case, it could have hijacked your career that teach us so much and completely change the trajectory of what we're doing, helping others to elevate their health. I'm curious as you were going through it, you know, I think a lot of us, as we talk about these things like mercury toxicity and mercury poisoning. And even when we were first learning it for ourselves, it's such a foreign concept. Like you said, you weren't taught this at dental school. We're not taught this growing up. So kind of walk me through what that like epiphany was like for you when you're kind of realizing that a lot of stuff that you were taught and trained in, there's a whole other way of seeing it. So, so like, what were the switches that, that made it clear to you that this was actually something that was legit? that this made sense to you from, from a doctor's perspective? I've always been a seeker. You know, I've always been the kind that asks a lot of questions. And if something doesn't make sense, I keep asking questions until it does. So I had already been down that path just in dentistry in general. Uh, let's say, for example, um, I remember seeing a lot of people that had worn off front teeth. And I was told that people just grind their teeth because they just grind their teeth. Well, that never sat well with me. I thought, well, why do some people and some people don't? And so I was already in that mode of asking questions and digging until I found an answer that made sense. And that's what I really had to just do here. As soon as someone said, could this be mercury poisoning? I got tested. I found out that my mercury levels were off the charts. So first I was a little frustrated. I thought, okay, <laughs> why is the profession not talking about this? if literally the people most at risk for this are the people in the profession. Yeah. You know, if you have a mercury filling that I remove, it's one. And certainly I'm concerned for your health and I don't want you to bring those fumes, breathe those fumes, but I could be removing 20 a day. So the compound effect for the professional is massive, massive. And they're not talking about it. As I've done a lot of deep diving, I found that a lot of it has to do with legality, which is frustrating but it's a reality. So I've really decided I don't fight against the things that I can't fight. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know, and really legally, the dental profession cannot talk about some of these things on a broad professional level because every dentist would be sued that had ever placed or removed a mercury filling. So they never will. So I've just come to accept that, you know what, that's okay. 
<laughs> that's okay. And now my job is to teach you what they can't. And mm -hmm. that's really what I come, that, that's the place I come from. And I'm all about research and backing. And I'm not going to tell you just something because it's a nice story. I'm going to tell you something because I've done the research to show that what I'm telling you is true. Yeah. So I try to simplify things down now from my point forward, if that makes sense. I take a lot of information, gather it all together, distill it down, simplify it now to present to people like those who are listening to say, okay, this is what you need to know to be mm -hmm. able to make sure you don't have to do, you don't have to go down the path that I went down. Absolutely love it. So much more empowering because the other can get so overwhelming. It's so big. And like you said, we can't, we can't impact it. We can't necessarily make easy change. Whereas you can be such a, such a filter for so many people. So how did you, I'm curious. So what was your testing? Was it blood? Was it hair? And then how did you get the mercury out? And how did you feel after you did? Did it, did it create a dramatic change for you? You know, mercury is interesting because it goes and lodges in places that aren't easily ac ac accessed. So you can't just do a hair test. You can't just do a, a saliva test or a urine test or a blood test on its own oftentimes because mercury is hiding. It's deep in the tissue. So you have to do something called a provocation test. And what that means is that you use a, 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 a chemical, a, you know, you use a product that actually pulls the mercury out of the tissues so that it can then be accessed and read. And the best way to do that is through a urine test. There's two kinds of mercury. There's methyl mercury, then there's organic mercury. And methyl mercury is the kind that you find with fish. It's, they talk about, oh, don't eat a lot of salmon or, you know, tuna because you might get a lot. Inorganic or organic mercury is the kind that you're going to get in mercury fillings. Different test methods show different kinds. The urine test will show both. So that's the one that I did. I was told at the time that I should do IV chelation, meaning pulling mercury out through with some IV uh, medicines. They told me it would be 97 treatments and then it would be bad an hour and a half each. And I said, do you know my life? <laughs> That's a lot. Not going to happen. I just will tell you right now it's not going to happen. So I did one and then I said, you know, I don't think this is really that logical or that possible for me right now. Mm -hmm. So I did no more IV chelation and I've since found that that's actually a very poor way to do this. So I'm like, ah, great. I'm glad, no, glad I didn't do that. <laughs> so um, there are other oral products that you can take to try and pull it from the tissue. I used a lot of gentle products, even things like chlorella is a mm -hmm. great uh, detoxer or, you know, chelator for mercury because oftentimes mercury detox can be pretty intense and can really beat you up. So did I feel better immediately? No, because this stuff wasn't gone immediately at all. In fact, I think it took about eight years till I really went, oh, I can remember things again. Like, this is amazing. My brain's back. Okay, things are back. But I still work in the dental profession. I'm still there all the time. So I have to continually detox and continually pull and dump. And that's the key. It's not just dump, it's pull and dump. You have to do a little bit of both to be able to get it out. So fascinating. And what have you seen within your profession or symptoms that show up for providers that perhaps have mercury poisoning? Sad things, actually. I think that there's, uh, I had fertility issues my entire life. Uh, you know, my entire life. Well, I'm not dead yet, but I hope I'm not fertile still. Um, <laughs> anyway, my, my entire reproductive years, I had, uh, I had fertility issues. And I think that's hugely related. And I, I talked to so many dental assistants, dental receptionists. They're like, gosh, we just have really having a struggle, you know, getting pregnant. Like, Look at the mercury you're around all the time. So I think fertility is a big one. Dentistry, actually, dentists are the highest profession at risk for suicide. Imagine wow. that. Yeah. And then you look at it, you think, hmm, mercury affects the brain. I wonder mm -hmm. if a whole bunch of dentists are depressed and suicidal because their brains are fried with mercury numbness, lots of numbness. And you know, we blame it on a, you're a chiropractor. So you probably have seen dentists, man, we, we screw things up because we sit so poorly. Mm -hmm. And so that was what I blamed all of my numbness on was just my poor posture. When I'm working, you know, I'm tipping my head, I'm raising my arms. That was a part of it, but I got massages like literally twice a week was a chiropractor once a week, you know, for years. And it didn't touch it until I got mercury out. So I think numbness, going to hands, going to sleep at night, those kinds of things. It's the inflammation. It's the inflammation that's just throwing everything off. And then gut issues are big. And this is on everyone because mercury interferes with the binding of zinc, which creates stomach acid. So if you have mercury in your stomach, in your system, you won't create enough stomach acid, which means your digestive system will not be operating like it should. 
So mercury is huge for digestion issues. Got it. Okay. So much powerful information there. Thank you. So what do you do in your practice if someone has a cavity? You're obviously not filling it with mercury. (laughs) No, (laughs) I'm not filling it with mercury. First thing we do is we find out how deep is it. So we have a special laser called a diagnodent that I can shine on the tooth if it's on the chewing surface. I can shine it on the tooth and it tells me how deep the cavity is and, well, is there a cavity first of all and how deep it is. If it's in the enamel layer, so a tooth, most people know we have different layers in the tooth. The enamel is the part you see. That's the hard part on the outside, and it's really full of minerals. All a cavity is, is when the body dissolves the minerals out of the tooth, creates a hole in the crystal structure of the enamel, and bacteria crawl in. And then bacteria sit there. They eat, they eat all kinds of things. They love sugar, but they eat sugar. They dump acid, which builds a dig a bigger hole in the tooth and they crawl a little deeper in the tooth. And that's all a cavity is, is a hole that's made because of acid, some sort of acid, and then bugs crawl it in it. Nobody likes to think about bugs crawling in their teeth, but it's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> so, so if the cavity is just in that outside mineral layer, then the key is to put minerals back. So we need to stop the acid, whatever the acid is that's dissolving it, and we need to put minerals back in the hole so that bacteria can't get in. So if it's in the outside layer, what we do is we use ozone, which kills all the bugs that are living in there. And then we use hydroxyapatite, which is simply the mineral a tooth is made of. So we have a varnish that we use in the office, but I also have a tooth powder that I've made that puts that hydroxyapatite right back into those crystal structures. If you can seal that crystal back up again, you can actually reverse or stop a cavity. So this is huge for parents because baby teeth are small and the enamel isn't very thick. So the key is to catch it when it's in that outside layer, because once it's past that outside layer, there's little tubules inside of the tooth. I like to think of it like a superhighway inside of there. And as soon as the bacteria reach the superhighway, they've spread. So once they've spread into the dentin, that's where we actually have to go in, access that place that they've spread, clean that out. We clean that out with ozone, kill all the bugs too, and then fill up the spot, that the hole that they've created. The key is how deep is it? How deep it. is it? Okay. If it's an enamel you, still, we can heal it. What do you fill it with when you fill it? We use what's called composite. So it is a resin glass mixture. So it's the white fillings. You know, when somebody says, I got a white filling, that's what you got was a composite filling. It's a resin glass mixture. It bends and flex like a tooth. Um, But ideally you would use ozone underneath it to make sure all the bacteria, all the bugs that crawled in those holes are dead before you actually put the filling on top. I actually just recorded a bunch of videos on sealants. The same thing goes with sealants. A sealant is simply the most cavity prone part of a tooth is the grooves and and fissures on the top of the tooth because stuff gets stuck in there and it's harder to get it cleaned out. So a six-year-old molar comes in at age six, you know, (laughs) so that's the first molar and that's a permanent tooth. So that tooth's going to be in there from age six to age dead, you know, age gone. Basically that tooth needs to last a long time. It's the most frequent tooth to need a root canal, to need a crown. I don't, I use the word, sorry, to have a root canal, have a crown. I don't believe you need a root canal. Um, but, uh, because it's just in there so much. So a sealant is that same resin material flowed in all of those crevices so that the bacteria can't crawl in and create a cavity. Issue is you have to make sure there's no bugs underneath the sealant. Otherwise you've just sealed in bugs and it's going to be worse. So that's why I love this laser. We can detect is the rugs in there already. Do we need to clean that before we seal it? Or if the sealant isn't done properly, they can leak and then bacteria gets underneath the sealant. And again, now your toothbrush can't get to it because it's Mm. underneath the sealant. So sealants are fabulous for parents ask me this all the time. Sealants are great if they're done on a tooth that doesn't already have a cavity and if they're done right so that they're sealed properly. Okay. And the only way to know that is with this special laser that an integrative dentist would have? A lot. Yes, exactly. (laughs) A lot of dentists will poke at it. You know, they'll poke at it with their little instrument, but Honestly, it's they, they've done research. It's about 30% accurate to poke at it. Okay. So the laser is much more accurate. Oh, so fascinating. I'm There's so much more I want to ask you. Okay. You touched on your tooth powder. We will absolutely talk about that because that has been one of the biggest game changers in our family. I've learned so much about toothpaste. Toothpaste that I was using in our home that are natural toothpaste that have completely faulty ingredients in them. We're going to absolutely get to that. So hang tight. But before that, I just want to kind of continue down this trajectory of, okay, we've touched on cavity. Let's talk about root canal. 
You don't believe okay. people need a root canal. Tell me more. <laughs> no. The reason somebody might say you need a root canal is if the tooth is dying or is dead. But I honestly find that a lot in dentistry, we often do it as well if the tooth is symptomatic. It's really sensitive, it, you know, those kinds of things. We don't know that it's dying yet, and it's certainly not dead yet. It can feel a lot. It's an easy out. Let's, let's just call it that. It's an easy out. What a root canal is, is the nerve of the tooth is accessed. So you make a hole to the nerve of the tooth. You clean out the nerve and the blood vessels on the inside of the tooth, clean it out, disinfect it, fill it up. The idea is great. The idea is fabulous. You keep the tooth in the mouth. You get to chew with it still. It lasts however many more years. This is all really good. The trouble is the tooth anatomy. Inside of that tooth, there's the main canal called the root canal where that blood vessel and nerve live. But off of that, remember we talked about those little tubules that go mm -hmm. inside of a tooth? There are literally a mile of tubules inside of every tooth. Oh. So many tubules. They're little microscopic little babies. They are the things that are the feeder channels. So the blood vessel comes up through the center of the root, all the nutrients that come to go and feed that enamel and feed the tooth, keep it healthy. They have to go from the center through those little tiny tubes out to the enamel. Well, that's the problem. They're too little. We can't clean them and we can't fill them. So dead tissue stays inside those little teeny tiny channels and bugs love dead stuff. So guaranteed bacteria are going to find the dead tissue in those channels. So this requires your immune system to do a lot of work. Now you have a chronic low-grade infection that never goes away. doesn't matter what you do. This is going to always be here because there's dead tissue that have attracted bugs. So your immune system has to work overtime 24-7 to try to keep it happy. Well, what do immune systems do that work overtime 24-7? They get off track. You ever heard of an autoimmune disease? <laughs> an autoimmune disease is when your body starts to fight itself. And I believe that if it has to fight an enemy so long and so much that they all just get a little tired and they start to shoot, they start to shoot themselves in the process. So we often find autoimmune diseases connected with these low-grade infections around infected root canals. You don't feel it. The nerve's gone. There's no sensation there. You don't even know what's happening. I will find infections that are so large They've eaten a hole through the bottom of the sinus and filled an entire sinus full of infection. People aren't even aware of it. They go, yeah, I'm a little stuffy up here, but they don't feel well. They're sick. They have fatigue. They have autoimmune diseases, usually diseases, multiple. They have heart conditions. They have hip, knee, joint issues, and they have no idea that it could be related to this tooth in their head that's reinfected. Wow. That's why I don't recommend root canals. So what do I do instead? I try to save the tooth if at all possible. If it's still alive, meaning if you can feel cold on your tooth, if you go, ah, my tooth's killing me. It's so cold. Yay. I'm so happy to hear that <laughs> because that means the nerve's still alive. That means okay. we could potentially save this tooth. I'm so happy it hurts. So what do we do? We kill all the bacteria with that ozone. Like I talked about, we use ozone, kills everything in sight, and then we fill over top of it and we are able to save about 95% of teeth that way. Wow. Huge. If yeah. it's already dead, if it's already infected, if you have a swollen face, if you can't chew on it because there's so much infection underneath, we're just going to remove that tooth. We're going to remove it because the infection is spread into the bone, it's spread into you, and it's not going away just because you've got the inside of the root filled up. That infection is everywhere. So we remove the tooth, we replace it with a ceramic dental implant. So if we don't do root canals, we save them. Or we replace them. I've switched over to that kind of dentistry. I, I, as a kid, as a teenager, got multiple root canals, and it's really interesting. I, I know you have a background in um, autoimmune disease, and you know, I was a teenager, college age kid. I had a lot of those things: uh, joint pain, inflammation, um, painful periods, hormones all over the place, uh, brain fog, some depression. Um, and, you know, when someone finally connected, not necessarily that all those symptoms were solely caused by my dental care. I think a lot of things contribute, I'm sure like you do as well. Um, it's made a huge impact. And I also have Lyme disease. And I know there's a big, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, what, are, what are your feelings on like the spiral keats actually being 
in our, have you heard this in like in, in the cavitations? Yeah, we find them. So we biopsy them and we find them at the end of these failed root canals. We also find them in, yeah, we haven't talked about cavitations. Really all that is, is an area in the bone that had a trauma. So that might be a tooth removed, that might be an injury, uh, something. And after the trauma, it didn't heal properly. And why did it heal properly? Oftentimes there's a piece of bone left there, a piece of ligament left there, something left there that acts like a sliver in the bone. And that area that doesn't heal is again, dead tissue and bugs love dead stuff. So it usually reinfects. Yeah, we find these co-infections in these areas. Why? I think there's two reasons. Number one, they never go away. So it's a place that they can go live and they can go and flourish. Um, the second reason is, is there's not a lot of blood flow because this is a dead area in the jawbone, a dead, dead area in the tooth. There's not a lot of blood flow. So they're safe. They're safe from your immune system in those areas. Mm. So I think that's why they go and live there because they can escape enemies. You know, they can escape their enemies when they go hide out in these areas. Yeah, they're smart, right? They're, yeah. they're adaptive. Totally. And, you know, there's a huge correlate between obviously root canals didn't cause your Lyme disease, but perhaps root canals and the immune insult they were made it less for you, made it so your body was less able to attack and take care of the Lyme disease. So yeah, there, it's not often causative, it's correlative. It, it depresses the immune system in a way, it affects your health in a way that your body can't do its natural innate job of taking care of you. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I think if you looked at a lot of people's blood work, a lot of us walk around with perhaps Epstein-Barr virus, right? Mono, yeah. you know, from when we were a teenager or Lyme disease. And some of us have symptoms of it and some of us don't. And I know you know this, but just kind of reiterating to the listeners, it's it's things like this that fill our bucket of our body having too much to work on so it can't actually focus on the task at hand. So I want to ask you, you know, your thoughts on are are certain before we delve into tooth powders and remineralizing the teeth and active things we can do to set us up for success are there people that are actually have bad teeth are there families that are genetically more prone to things like this or is that all a myth great question so the thing i always ask everyone is they'll say well this is just genetic my next question is always what is genetic so let's t- talk about a tooth could you have bad teeth well perhaps, perhaps you are just born with thinner enamel, let's say, than someone else might be. And there are some genetic predispositions to that. You have thinner enamel. Well, you may also have genetically inherited a poor absorption, poor absorption in your gut. So now all the minerals you're eating, you are not absorbing very well. They're going through the other side. And so your body takes minerals from your teeth to feed the rest of you. Well, which was it? Well, it's still genetic, but it was a genetic GI issue. You might have a genetic absorption or processing issue, often called methylation, which makes it so even if you're using certain products, certain vitamins, certain minerals, you're not absorbing them properly. So it's going to show up in your teeth. Um, People say, oh, genetics, you know, there's a genetic gum disease. Well, perhaps, or maybe it's actually a genetic collagen disease. Collagen is the glue that holds the gums together. And so perhaps it's the collagen that we need to attack. So that's my issue with saying, I just have bad teeth genetically, is it, it writes it off. It's like, there's nothing I can do about it. So then mm-hmm. I always challenge and say, well, what's genetic? Let's get to that because we have to actually get to an actionable item. We can't just write this off as genetic. So that's, so yes, the answer is yes, but that doesn't mean we stop there. Yeah. We find what is genetic so that we can do something about it. Love it. Again, empowering. So now we can, you know, pivot into tools because these yep. tools are what we all want to know. So let's take someone, I do actually want to touch on grinding. What if someone grinds their teeth? Do you think that that's a muscular thing? Have you heard of like parasites as a cause of grinding? Do you subscribe to that? Yes. And (laughs) yes. And, Mm -hmm. um, often what I find with grinding is two issues. Number one, either an imbalance in the bite. So there's something that doesn't fit with the joint. The joint is movable. The jaw joint is movable. There's a ball that moves in the socket. You understand this very well. Um, So there's the joint is movable. The teeth are fixed, meaning your teeth aren't going to move every time you put them together. So the teeth are going to run the show here. If your teeth, when your teeth fit, if your jaw doesn't, your muscles won't like it. 
And so they will try to fix this by grinding and flattening the teeth and getting them to fit together better. They'll never win, but our bodies are really good at resilience and trying to fix ourselves. So that's one possibility. And we you will usually see that as flattening of every tooth. So I'm gonna see every single tooth just kind of getting milled flat. Back teeth, front teeth, everything, because the body's just trying to balance this out. Some of the other things that'll show up are gum recession. People go, what? Gum recession? How is that related whatsoever? As that tooth, as that tooth is ground on up here, it's flexing, bending and flexing. And the flexure point is right at the gum line. So the gum moves down to find a solid piece of tooth that's not bending and flexing all the time. So we'll often see gum recession very related to grinding. And in the case of my teeth aren't fitting together right, we'll usually see kind of a generalized recession. Everything's flattening, everything's receding. So that's number one. The second reason for grinding is often there's not enough room for air back here. Either because there's infection in the mouth, potential reasons we've already talked about, you, were, you have a lot of allergens, big tonsils, those kinds of things. The body will move the jaw forward in order to open up the airway back here. What that's going to look like is worn front teeth and recession more right here on the corners as those mm -hmm. teeth are getting banged against as you move forward. So those are two things to look for. It's always indicative of something that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. So if you're grinding, there's a reason and there's something yeah. we can do about it. So how do you address those situations? What are the tools to help in those cases? Bite balancing is the one if the bite's off. Sometimes it takes orthodontics to get everything moved right. Sometimes it's just bite balancing, which is just some very, very minor reshaping of things. Often, honestly, we see this after braces <laughs> because oh. they put teeth where they look pretty but they don't always fit very well. So mm -hmm. we have to do some minor bite balancing once the braces are off. So that's when I often will see that as after braces. Um, mm -hmm. When it's an airway issue, what we do for that is get to the underlying root cause of that. Do you have infection? Do you have tonsils, large tonsils, swollen tonsils? Do you have allergies? Do you have other things that we can tackle? to try to make it so that there's more room here so that you're not having to bring the jaw forward. Sometimes it's a developmental issue. Mm -hmm. um, if you had teeth removed for braces, which a lot of people in their 50s, <laughs> there was like a whole generation of people who got teeth, got four teeth taken out to make room in their mouth for braces. It permanently made your, t your mouth too small for your tongue, for the tissue to fit. So that all that tissue has to go to the back of the throat. And we have a whole generation of people that are now on Ambien, thanks to taking teeth out for braces. Wow. It's actually huge. So we can reopen that mouth back up and give room for breathing again. And sometimes it's, it requires that to expand and make more room again. And you can do that even in someone who's what, yep. 60, 70, yep. I'm assuming. Is that yep. the age of these people that are on the ambient? Uh, a lot, we'll, we'll, we'll see a lot of people anywhere from 50 or 30 to 60 in that range. There's a ton of people in that range. Yeah, we can expand even in adults. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. All right, let's do some more tools. Let's talk <laughs> about toothpaste. This one is my favorite. Okay, so for starters, I think let's start at like your basic run-of-the-mill marketed. I want to talk about kids, kids' dental health. I don't like anything about them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because why? Why? Because you're the expert. Have fluoride. They're going to have fluoride. And the problem with fluoride is teeth that have cavities aren't deficient in fluoride. We've already talked about what they're deficient in. They're deficient in minerals, not fluoride. Fluoride does make enamel harder. It does. However, it also does a lot of other things that we don't want. It causes bone fractures or leads to bone fractures often because it leads to a softer, more or harder, more brittle crystal. Harder sounds good. More brittle is bad when it comes to a bone. So we see higher rates of hip fractures, of other fractures. It throws off thyroid function. Um, there's just so many issues with fluoride. There's no reason for it. Why would we give your child something that had all these negative side effects for one positive effect when we have an alternate that does all the positive with none of the negative? It makes no sense to me. Why do you think it is in these products if there is an alternative, which we'll clear touch on what the, that is next? Yeah, clear back in the 30s, they talked about how kids <laughs> or people who had well water with higher levels of fluoride had lower rates of tooth decay. It's true. 
it's not true. It's not untrue. I'm not going to dispute it. However, mm -hmm. what they don't tell you is their teeth were also mottled, meaning splotched with brown and white spots all over them. They look terrible and their bones are a mess. So it does make stronger teeth. It's easy. They can pump it in there and give it to you and it's easy to do. It's going to take a whole big swing. And I think you're the people who are listening to this are the ones that are going to be the ones to push this swing to say, I'm not okay with that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't like that anymore. I don't like all the negative side effects. The other issue is for kids, my gosh, they're getting it everywhere. They're getting it in their water. They're getting it in their toothpaste. They're getting it in their mouth rinse. They're getting it in prescriptions. They're getting it in anything that was made with fluoridated water. So any pre-made bottled soda or juice or anything all has fluoride in it. All of it. <laughs> so how much is too much? In my mind, everything, every, every bit of it's too much. So fluoride is one. They have something called triclosan often. It's a, it's something that you're going to use to disinfect a surface. Well, I don't want that in my mouth. Um, it has a whole bunch of preservatives. I don't want that in my mouth. It often has artificial sweeteners because especially for kids, they want them to taste good, right? So it's got a whole bunch of sweetener in there. I don't want that in my kid. It also has a lot of zinc oxide. A lot of times the white in it is zinc oxide. We're seeing a lot of zinc and, uh, Sorry, zinc and titanium. We're seeing a lot of zinc and titanium sensitivities because of all the stuff the zinc and titanium we're eating. We're not even realizing it. I don't want that in there. It has glycerin in it to make your teeth feel mm, slippery smooth. Makes it so no minerals actually get into your tooth. I don't want it, that in there. It's pretty pretty much every single thing on that list. Sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium laureth sulfate. Make it foam up. I don't want that in there. They found that it's really, it can cause canker sores and all sorts of issues in the mouth. And I don't like a foaming tooth product because it makes you feel like you've done more than you really have. <laughs> like mm. your mouth's all foamy, I'm done. Ah, sweet, spit it out. Yeah, no, I your teeth are still that. disgusting. <laughs> mm -hmm. You yeah. just felt like they were clean because your mouth's full of foam, you know? So yeah. I don't want to, I don't want a detergent. I don't want anything foaming up in there either. <laughs> so everything. Yeah, uh, totally. You know, the thing with the fluoride and I, what I am loving is even when I'm at stores like Target, where I used to not be able to find fluoride free toothpaste, like we vote with our dollars and people yep. are voting for no fluoride Yep. there. I swear yep. every time I go to Target, there's another option of fluoride free toothpaste. Thank you. And I love how you said, you know, does it work? Absolutely. But what happens with a lot of these things, fluoride, all these things that we grew up on, um, that we were told were good for us. It's like, it depends what question you ask. Yeah. Does it make your teeth stronger? Yes. Yeah. Period. That's it. But if you ask what else it does, it's not going to sound that appealing to moms for their babies. Love it. The other thing, this blew me away when someone first introduced me to this concept of check what's in your kid's toothpaste. They come with a poison label. Yeah. If your kid swallows more than a pea size of this delicious tasting bubblegum toothpaste at age two, three, four, which is pretty guaranteed to happen, you're supposed to call poison control. Why is that? <laughs> What is it fluoride. Of fluoride? It's a fluoride. Yep. Yep. Fluoride is toxic. <laughs> and yet we put, they put the, I mean, our kids don't have them, so fluoride I don't know trays. what age they treat, but like, what age does that start in traditional dentistry? Just young. As soon as you can, as soon as they'll sit still long enough to put it in their mouth. And I'm sure it gets swallowed. Of course it does. They put little suction tubes in there to try to get it, but of course it's getting swallowed. Yeah. So where can people that are, do you have resources or maybe we'll put them in the show notes if I can yeah. get them from you. Um, if yeah. people want to read more about fluoride, let's give them some great resources. We'll be sure to do that yeah. in the show notes. Okay. So what do we want to see in a toothpaste? All you need is something that'll clean. So for me, I use bentonite clay. It has minerals in it. So it's going to get minerals into the tooth. It's, you know, it's going to clean the tooth off and you want to add minerals back. Honestly, those are the only two things you want. You might need to add something to actually make it taste good because if you want your kid to use it, especially it can't really taste like dirt. There was one kind I remember my kids were using and they're like, mom, it just tastes like lemon flavored dirt and it's super disgusting. <laughs> so, you know, they're just not going to use it. <laughs> so uh, what I have in my tooth powder is the mineral that you want to add back is called hydroxyapatite. You're going to hear it all over the place now. Hydroxyapatite's the buzzword. Everybody's talking about it. That's the mineral the teeth are made of. Doesn't it make sense? I've been saying this for years. Shouldn't we replace what's missing rather than replace what was never there to begin with, which is fluoride? Let's yeah. replace the hydroxyapatite. So it's a, basically it's a calcium, a chelated calcium mineral that, that builds the tooth. So that I actually add calcium carbonate, which is another level or another kind of calcium. 
I add xylitol and people have questioned me. They say, why do you have xylitol in your tooth product? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, it makes it taste good. But number two is xylitol is actually anti-cavity. This is why you'll see xylitol, um, mints, uh, gum, that kind of thing, because bacteria cannot use xylitol as a food. And that's how they cause cavities is they eat sugar and then they poop. Basically, they poop acid. And the acid is what creates a hole in the tooth. Bacteria cannot consume xylitol. So it's a sugar that will not create an acid. It will not create a cavity. So if you use xylitol as a replacement for a lot of the other sugars, then you are trying, you are working to eliminate the food for the bacteria in your mouth. So xylitol is, there's a purpose for it. It makes it taste good, but also it's anti-cavity. And then we add things in there. Mine has a couple of herbal things that are good for gum health, that are good to keep plaque off the teeth, um, just basically build the health of the mouth as well as keep the mouth clean. Really, if we're going to put something in our mouth, we might as well get a benefit out of it as well. Is what yeah. I figured. I've been using your tooth powder now for probably, when was that I saw you? Maybe about six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. I absolutely love it. And the thing that really stuck out that you talked to me about was glycerin. Mm -hmm. Glycerin is in a lot of probably every fluoride-free toothpaste that I have ever used. Yep. And I know we talked about it, but will you just uh, say it again? What does glycerin do and why do we not want it in our toothpaste? Well, the reason they put it there is because it makes your teeth feel that mm, uh, squeaky clean. You know, that's the feeling you want. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is it coats the tooth. So it coats the tooth. And if the tooth is coated, the minerals you're trying to put in there, hydroxyapatite, calcium carbonate, whatever it is you're trying to put in, can't get in. The way you get into the tooth is those tubules. There's little openings to all those tubules. And if they are clogged by glycerin, they, the minerals can't actually get through into what you want. So I don't want glycerin in the mouth. And if you've been using my tooth powder, you know, people will say my teeth have never felt cleaner mm -hmm. than when using this, even though it's glycerin free, because it's actually cleaning rather and filling those holes naturally with the hydroxyapatite rather than just putting the shine over top of it all. Yeah. And I love too, it's whitening. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't expect like a very clean natural product to be whitening. So how do you, what's the whitener that's in there? There's a couple charcoal, which there's a lot of controversy about charcoal too. And people say it's so abrasive. You shouldn't use it long-term. It's all about the size of the piece of charcoal in there. So we use a very, very fine piece. So it's no different than just a, you know, a fine powder that's in there. Baking soda is also a natural whitener. That is also very good to alkalize the mouth. So it'll kill off any acidity basically going in there. And then there's a little bit of salt, a little bit of natural sea salt in there. That's also a natural whitener. But honestly, the main thing that's whitening. So those things are going to scrub. They're going to clean your tooth and clean any stain off. But the thing that mainly does the whitening is the hydroxyapatite. The more dense the minerals are in your tooth, the less the inside layer shows through. Does that make oh, sense? So basically yeah. you're making the enamel more opaque, more white. So the, because dentin on the inside is yellow. So the thinner your enamel gets, the more yellow your teeth look. So if you can thicken the enamel and make it really dense and full of minerals, it will be, it will be whiter naturally. Phenomenal. Yeah. I definitely have noticed a difference. Yeah. Okay. Lightning round. I want to ask you about some things that either I put in my body, my kids put in their body, or some people have asked me uh, that knew I was hopping on this call with you, whether or not they're good for our teeth. Please say it's okay. Seltzer. I love seltzer club soda. So here's the problem with seltzer. No, I know. Like, no don't say it. <laughs> it's the acid. I'm so take my last sip right now. <laughs> exactly. Do it right now. The problem is the carbonation is made through carbonic acid. So it's still acidic. It doesn't mm. have the acid plus the sugar. So that's good, you know, because you're not like dissolving the minerals and then feeding the bugs to crawl in there, but you're still potentially dissolving the minerals out of the tooth. Acid dissolves minerals. That's just what it does. That's why you pour like Coke on your, the terminal on your car battery, because it dissolves all that crud, you know? So yeah. acid just does that on the tooth. So if you're going to drink seltzer, I'm not telling you you can't, you just have to drink non-carbonated water after, preferably, kind of oh, rinse okay. your mouth, get that acid out of the mouth, and just don't do it all day long. Okay. And I tell people, even this with soda, like I don't, I don't love sodas because you're adding the carbonic acid plus phosphoric acid plus the sugar. So, you know, if you have to drink the soda, just guzzle it, like take a, take a, you know, a can and just guzzle it and be done with it for the day. Yeah. And then, then you're fine because your, your saliva will naturally 
bring your mouth back to the right pH. Okay. I wouldn't say I have to, but I do enjoy it. I do. I do enjoy drinking it. So just don't sip it all the time because otherwise every time you take a sip, the the pH drops, it becomes more acidic in your mouth, more prone to dissolving minerals. Then it comes back up again and then you take another sip and you drop it again. So that's why it's better to do it all at once, get that pH down and then let your saliva bring it back up and keep it there for a while. Okay. I assume, because I've kind of heard that with my next question, um, apple cider vinegar. Like I know a lot of us love to put it in our water for immune health gut health, all the things. How do you feel about that as far as dental health? Just don't do it all the time. Do it first thing in the morning. That's uh-huh. usually the best is if you can if you can add that first thing in the morning, it kicks your gut into alkaline production, which okay. is what you want. So first thing in the morning, do your apple cider, apple cider vinegar, but don't do it the rest of the day. Otherwise you are going to just be dissolving the minerals on your teeth every single time that pH drops in your mouth with that vinegar. Okay. And how would you do it? Would you mix it in your water and use a straw and do it all at once? Or do you do, I can't do like the shots of it personally. No, I can't do it. It makes my stomach sick too. (laughs) Yeah. I'd put it in water and just drink it all down and then be done with it for the day. Same thing with lemon water. People ask the same thing. Should Mm -hmm. I do lemon water? If you're going to do that constant, you know, you're going to squeeze a whole lemon into your water. That's first thing in the morning and that's it. Okay. You do it all day long. You're going to be dissolving your teeth away. Okay. Uh, Coffee and tea. So it's the acidity. Again, that's the issue. So if you're looking at coffee is is somewhat acidic, tea usually isn't. It depends on the tea that you have. It's all about the acidity. That's the main thing. You can even get little pH strips and you can test it. You can see where should we be. We want pH to be around seven. Anytime it drops below seven, you're going to be pulling minerals out of your tooth. So that's the concern is just the acidity. How acid is it? How acidic is it? And how often are you dropping the pH in your mouth so that now it's going to be pulling the minerals out of your teeth. Okay. Um, so you're saying test your tea or like test your saliva? Both. Both. Test okay. your tea. See what acid you're putting in there. Okay. Last drink question. How about red wine? <laughs> so the same. It's acidic. Think about it. Mm-hmm. You know, grape juice, wine, anything are acidic. So don't drink it all day, which you're probably not doing anyway <laughs> when yeah. it comes to red wine. <laughs> all these things are just in moderation. It's drink mm-hmm. it, know what it's doing. The very worst time to brush your teeth is after you've had an acid attack. So the very worst time to brush your teeth is after coffee, after seltzer, after soda, after wine, because your teeth are going to be softer. Mm. You want to get minerals back in there before you're going to start to brush. So you could just put the hydroxyapatite powder on there and let it soak in for a bit before you actually hit it with a toothbrush and start to brush it away. Okay. And like you said, go ahead and rinse with some good water and let your teeth remineralize. Yep. Yep. Let the saliva get back up to normal pH. So really it's all about science. All these questions come back to just, let's just think, how does a cavity form? What is a tooth made of? What does acid do to it? Okay. Now, as far as good things that we can do, how do you feel about oil pulling? Are you a fan? Oil pulling is great. The reason is bugs, all bugs have a certain membrane. It's called a membrane. Their whole outside layer is, is oil, is fats. So when you put fat in your mouth, the fat of the the oil you put in and the fat from the bacteria are going to attract to each other. So what you're doing is literally sucking bugs out from all the little crevices in the mouth and it's getting into that oil, which means don't swallow that. <laughs> it's full of bugs now, you know, uh-huh. spit it out. Don't spit it into your sink, spit it into your garbage can. Um, it does help. Do you need to do it every single day? I think no, because we do want beneficial bacteria to live there. Mm-hmm. I like people using it about three or four times in a row. And then about once a week after that, just for me. Okay. And just your traditional coconut oil, do you put anything in it? I like coconut oil. It's just basic and simple. So easy. Yeah. And why not in your drain? Just because it'll clog it if the oil hardens? Exactly. Okay. Yep. So you spit it into your... I used to... I always laugh about this. I used to go and spit it off the back of my deck. I killed a whole patch of grass. <laughs> I was like, oh man, those are some oh. good bugs in that, in that mouth right there. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. So now you spit it into a Kleenex and throw it away. <laughs> wow. Fascinating. Didn't know that. Okay. What about foods that I know you're really big on food. You have a whole homestead. So you're Mm -hmm. essentially, it sounds like you're almost like living off the land, your family or doing your best to work as close to that as possible. So what are some of the worst and best foods as far as our dental health? So best, let's go there first. Anything that is going to give fat soluble vitamins. People don't understand why. Basically minerals The way minerals work is they need a fat soluble vitamin, which is A, D, E, and K. Those are the four fat ones. They are the ones that open the cell door and let the minerals in. 
So we want those fat soluble vitamins. So when people say, oh, I'm going to go on a completely low fat diet, well, good luck with teeth health then because they're probably going to suffer right now. And your brain and your hormones and <laughs> everything else. else. Every, yeah. single, every single cell in your body that requires it to function. <laughs> yeah. You know, those kinds of things. So yeah. it's for sure for teeth too. So um, the, the difficult thing is the two biggies are vitamin D3 and K2. Hard to get from food alone. But I do use uh, grass-fed butter. And I tell people all the time, less kale, more butter. And they're like, yes, best mm-hmm. diet advice ever. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> but uh, a lot of butter. Um, I just supplement vitamin K and vitamin uh, vitamin D3 and K2. We just supplement it because I just don't know that you can get it enough from your food. But you can think about where they're from. They're often from anything that's an animal fat derived. So it's going to be salmon, uh, meats, good meats. Obviously, there's some struggles with meat and dairy both. So I have a sometimes a hesitation recommending them because you're not always going to get the best meat and dairy when you're doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where you find them. Some in nuts and seeds, but it's mostly an animal product. So eggs, good eggs, good butter, good dairy, good meat. That's where mm-hmm. you're going to find it. The ones that you don't want are processed sugars largely because processed sugar is what the bacteria love to eat. So if you feed them their favorite food, they're going to excrete a lot of acid and your teeth are going to fall apart. It's just the way it is, no matter what. So processed sugars, white sugars is their very favorite food. If you feed them a lot of that, they're going to get cavities. Yeah, absolutely. So just, you know, just being real, like in the times when maybe a mom hands her kid a dessert or a treat or, you know, as adults, we have one. What's the best thing to do? Do you just rinse with water after? Get it off your teeth? Yep, and just do it sparingly. Mm-hmm. Some of the worst things to do, though, are the sticky candies. So parents, if you can avoid those, that's the best. The reason is because they don't leave the teeth very quickly. I mean, think about it. Yeah. You know, fruit snack versus, I don't know, what's a good candy? <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, something that's just going to be in and out, you know, quickly. Yeah. The difference there. You know, something that's going to clear the mouth quicker is going to be better. Because, yeah, we all eat sugar. We all, you know, we all do that. But just be conscious of it. And natural sugars are going to be easier um, to clear. They're not going to be the very favorite food of the bacteria. White sugar is the worst. Okay. And then dried fruits. Like our kids love dried fruit. But I know that, I mean, it's almost probably just as bad as candy. It sticks because on their teeth. Sticky. Yep. Yeah. So it's just yeah. a matter of just in moderation. Yeah. Okay. Do you have, you probably make your own butter, butter. No. <laughs> but for, okay. So a cow. <laughs> if you go to the store, what's your... What's your recommended brand? I feel I like very gold. You do. Okay. I've heard kind of flip-flopping things about that, but I have two. It's the best one that I can find commercially Easily. every time. Yeah. You know, if you go and you find some artisan butter that was produced by the Amish family that lives down the road, do that. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But most of us don't have an Amish family down the road, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's super helpful just to that's what we do too. And half the time I'm like, I know it's not the best anymore. And it's what my family's going to get in. So, but it's better than what, than all the other, other alternates, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Dr. Michelle, I know you have a ton of incredible resources. We're going to share them all. You talk so much about food on your platform. You've got some incredible downloadable guides that are free that people can take advantage of. There's one I just downloaded uh, recently on re- remineralizing your teeth. It's phenomenal. Awesome. You are such a wealth of resources. Thank you so much. Is there anything, uh, p- possibly an empowering message or any last tidbits of information that you want to share with my listeners? You know, my big thing that I always focus on, and I think, you know, you're talking about sugar reinforces it, that there's no perfect way to live. There's no perfect way to eat. There's no perfect way to care for yourself. But the key is care. And I think it's empowering to understand the background behind choices because we often get fearful of choices because we don't understand why we're choosing them. And this person said this and this person said this. And it's so confusing. Spend just a little time to understand the bottom line background, and then you'll be better at making your own choices. And it's about moderation, doing your best. We all just try to do our best. I love that. That's such a real approach. Thank you so much for your time. Have an incredible day and we will stay in touch. I'm going to want to probably do another one of these shortly. (laughs) Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that episode. There are so many tangible tools for you to walk away with for yourself and your family. If you like that video, please go ahead and put a like under the video. As always, I love hearing your comments. Please go ahead and put a comment. What was your favorite tip that you learned from that episode? 
What are you going to incorporate that you learned from Dr. Michelle? And as always, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And please, I know there's someone in your life that needs this information. Go ahead and share it with them. Thanks.